Don't you know that the music should be soft? And we're off. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of the oh, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Da -da 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 -da. That movie scared the, the crap out of you when I was a kid. Woo. Oh, come on. You're you're like 17 years old now. So back Shit. when you saw that and you were like 12 or 10. Shit, come on. Man. When those monkeys came flying out of the Ooh. air and shit. And the witch. Oh, Wicked Witch of the West. And I got to tell you, I, I, the kids, I've tried to show it to them. I think I'm going to try to show them again. Oh, yeah. Is it's it fucking much frightening for, for kids. It's frightening. but Too much for the boys right now. Yeah. Three and five. It's frightening. That was a. I got to tell you, now that I go back and like think of some of the stuff what that I was movie. watching. Yeah, it's just a great movie. But when I think of some of the stuff, like I tried to show them Gremlins the other day and they're five and three and they were like, the fuck is this? Like they were kind of scared. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I think I was watching this at their age, but times have changed. That was a big movie, Dorothy and the, you know, the, 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 the wizard and Oz. That was a big ass movie for, for some, I don't know, Universal, whoever did it. I think it was they Paramount. Made, Paramount. They made, Paramount. They made a yeah. billion bucks on that, on that thing. Did you see uh, the um, Renee Zellweger one, the one she won the Oscar for where she's playing? Uh, no, didn't see that film. Not Hepburn. Uh, who plays no, Dorothy? She, Dorothy, what's your name? You know, you know, the daughter of the famous, you know, the famous chick. Yeah. Liza That's Minnelli's you. daughter. No, yeah. Liza, no, no, Liza no. Minnelli's her daughter. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever her name was. Yeah. Famous. Yeah. I can't. Who cares? Who cares? But the point is, the movie was really good. And I can't. Re the, I'm, I'm mad at myself for not remembering. But back to The Wizard of Oz. Um, scary. I'm actually, I'm, you know what? Maybe I'll watch it with the kids tonight. Let's see. Because I think they have it in color. If it's in color, I think they'll watch it. Oh, they have it in color. And speaking of movies, bro, I yeah. tried to see your movie Friday night. Sold yeah. out. Tried to see it Saturday. Sold out. Sold out tonight. Um, I know this is like, this cool. is going live on, on you know, terrific yeah. Tuesdays on Patreon and then Wacky Wednesdays on our Reaper reviews. So mm -hmm. I'll have seen it by then, but not by now. But the next time I'll be able to give you my review, Ross. Did you just call it Terrific Tuesdays? Well, what do we want to call it? Or Terror no, Tuesday? Didn't... Somebody come up with something. We need something for Tuesdays on Patreon. So yeah, come like, on, peeps. Yeah, guys, come up with something. My Sam fam. Come on, babies. Come on now. Come, come on, on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> we have a <laughs> Sergeant Major Glenn Vila. Come Glenn on. Glenn Vila, our boy. Sergeant um, Major. Yeah, come up with something for Tuesdays. Um, you know, there are some really famous ones for Tuesdays, but let's come up with our own. And then, yeah, the movie, um, it's pretty cool because, you know, it Can't comes wait to see it, bro. Netflix on the 21st, you know, globally, 190 something, whatever countries. And then uh, but this was kind of a bonus that it's coming out in the theaters. And we saw it the other night, Thursday night, me and Meg, my first time in a theater since the global cool. pandemic. And uh, man, I, t I told you, I got like a little teary eyed, not not because of the movie. Um, because I was in the theater. <laughs> I love the movie theaters. Yeah. I love the theater. It's, I have so many incredible memories of movies. Yeah. yeah. And, and just, I have such incredible memories of like, it took me down that road of like seeing movies multiple times and spending so much time in the movie theater. Did you go to movie theaters a lot when you were a kid? Not really. Uh, we, I don't want to say we couldn't afford it, but you know, we had to watch our, our budget until yeah. I started uh, going, you know, working at Safeway, making two dollars and seven cents an hour, and bought my first Levi Je pair of Levi jeans, and mm -hmm. started going to the movies more when I was in like grade nine, grade ten, grade eleven. Yeah, a lot more then. So sure, we had a, we had a bunch of them in Saskatoon, the Capitol. Of course, they tore it down, assholes. Middle of the night, tore that beautiful thing down, Vaudeville mm -hmm. Theater, middle of Saskatoon. Wow. Odeon, Broadway, the Broadway. Were you ever like a, a like a movie? Like there was a time where I was single living in L.A. when I first got there, when I first started, you know, acting or saying I was an actor where I would go sometimes twice a week, once a week, usually on my own to the movies. And yeah. just like get lost. Did you ever do that? I did in Toronto when I first moved to Toronto by myself. Yeah. First time I ever went to a movie by myself was when I moved to Toronto after I graduated U of S. You bet. I love going to movies by myself. Well, good for you and Meg. Can't wait to see it, bro. 
Uh, yeah, it's cool. So uh, here we are. We're getting into uh, this season four is rolling. We're on episode five already, which is crazy. We're in episode five. It's called Brick. Thank goodness I don't have to look that up. We know what that stands for. Yeah, we know what that stands for. It has for. nothing to do with Humpty Dumpty and the brick on the wall. No, it no, does no. not. No. no, it is a brick, a 2.2 pound kilo of Coke. Why uh, would you do that, Juice? Oh, my God. And why were we so, why were we so back then with your father being black? Mm -hmm. Who who, who gives a fuck? No, that was a big thing. But remember, remember we asked that. Remember we asked that. And I think. We did. I remember all of us did. Yeah. It's the antiquated laws of certain um, clubs. The antiquated rules, I should say, not laws. The antiquated rules that certain clubs have where. If you look at motorcycle clubs, and I know it's changed dramatically, um, I bet. Is they're segregated. I mean, there are there, there's the Hispanic and Latino clubs, there's the black clubs, there's the you know the the sure. everyone else clubs or whatever they call them. You know, there's there is you know there's female motorcycle clubs. There's all these sure. different clubs, and um, while it's an incredible world, the motorcycle underground world, uh, it's also uh, particular when you get into the outlaw level of it, that one percenter, whatever. Um, so we asked a lot of questions. Well, I know I did. And um, I think so much of this now that when we, and we'll get into it was in Juice's head. I think that Juice was just a nervous dude. Oh and- my God, not only in your head, but we'll get into it with Clay and yeah. Gem on those fucking oh, letters man. in your Not-to-mo. head, in your head. This whole show is about what's going on in certain people's heads. Yeah, it starts to get into that Mr. Furley Three's Company territory where remember he used to come in and think he heard something in the whole 100%. episode. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what this is where, like, if the character, Juice being one of them, Clay being another, Gemma being another, where if they just asked, you'd avoid all these problems. Yeah. It's like that old line in Woody Woodpecker. If Woody Woody went straight to the police, none of this would have ever <laughs> Um, Fuck, I love that cartoon. <laughs> Me too. Woody Woodpecker was the shit. Um, okay, so uh, here we go with Brick. It opens up uh, husband and wife. Was this, life. was this their only meeting yeah, on this show? I think so. Kurt and Katie. Strange. Been married for years in real life. Yeah. She comes to see him in prison. Like, how fucking cool was that? I forgot about that scene. Imagine you doing scenes with Diana. <laughs> Someone will be ordering flex shampoo for Diana. She's a little wooden right now. Get the little flex going on. Oh my god! Well, whenever I have to do tapes, you know, uh, auditions or recordings, um, Meg is my reader. Sure, self tape. Meg yeah, helps Meg you is out. my reader. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a struggle. <laughs> she does so good but like if it's something funny she'll like look down and that almost makes it worse she can't look at me um and and like diana goes to me why'd you say it like that and i go well how would you say it i don't know but why would you say it like that i don't know i'm just acting here that's what i tell her i go i go do me a favor just read the lines let me do the acting okay i'll I'll do the acting i love her and work the camera Yeah, she always and she always that's so funny, too. When people do that, they're like, it's they ask you the question. But what they're really trying to say is like, I wouldn't do that. What I they say is they that. go, is that is that what you're going to do? <laughs> and you go, yeah, I was thinking about it. I, I thought so. I mean, I might do it again, but apparently not. Moment, apparently I, I should I was, change it. You know. <laughs> And the Oscar goes too. That's what I was thinking. (laughs) So it opens up on them too. I said, it must be so strange. And at the same time, it could be comforting, right? Because you got Kurt there who's writing the lines. He's he's across. Um, There was great camera movement. Who directed this episode? Uh, Barkley. Paris. Paris Barkley, yeah. yeah. I like the way the camera was drifting. Holy Um, fuck. There's, there's, There's a couple of, I think you were in one of them too. I think you and Roosevelt will we'll get to that. Yeah, the, yeah. the camera movement was stunning in this episode. Yeah, stunning. some really good. Really a lot good. of twosomes again. A lot, a lot of twosomes again. Acting scenes, twos. And and I think Paris was just like, come on, let's do something different with the cameras. And he mm-hmm. moved them constantly. Really cool. 
we're big on that in Sons. Like when you get an episode, it's like they almost don't spread the wealth. Like sometimes it's just two people, the whole episode, and it keeps yeah. jumping to groups of twos. Yeah. Like two, 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 two. You know, these duos, which, yeah. I, which you and I have talked about a hundred times as an actor is incredible. We're about to do an entire, an entire Patreon episode about it where we speak on the process of acting. But oh, yeah, we're I, doing that. Can't wait. Yeah, Patreon. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I can't wait to do that. But like, the, you know, I think that because acting is so personal, and we'll talk about this when we do that episode on Patreon, but I think that when, you, when you're with one person, it just makes it a little easier, especially if they're good and you like them, because you start to have fun, you can experiment more. Where in groups, the, the chances of somebody not being fucking it's, annoying or just doing hard. the wrong thing or not paying attention or... So uh, this or the, that must or, or the camera didn't get them in time. You know, something technically goes wrong. You got to do it again and again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then and that'll go into like we're cutting to this Mayan this Mayan love affair that we're in now with the Mayans. I mean, this is it, right? The sons and Mayans are just like from here on out, they're best friends. Is that and, the and, and one quick thing. So Bobby's in trouble. The last thing that that Gemma and Otto talk about is yeah, is, Bobby. It's, it's Bobby. Bobby semen has been found and that's, that's not good. And so here we go, Bobby. Um, how are you going to get out of this one? All right, fine. Yeah. So, so we go to the Mayan love affair. Jax's hair is man hugs back. everywhere. Yeah. Man hugs everywhere. Oh man. That was so, you know, that was a big thing. DL was big on that. That was a big thing where we'd walk into these scenes and by the time everybody was slapping leather, as I call it, cause it'd be those big slaps on the back half the scenes over it's like a 15 minute hug of everybody and well, then, we certainly are down from three takes to one now yeah and people would go oh you have to do that and i was like i know but it's also a make-believe show like you don't have to do it yeah you know it takes and and you just said it right where we could have had three takes of acting Please. we now just did three takes of hugging and we have one oh, take oh, of that. back back slap 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 love you love you. bro bro how you doing bro Miss bro bro bro, bro. bro. <laughs> oh jesus hurry up so jax's hair is growing back which is a good thing apparently um the mayans leave one of their guys that's this actor jesse who i love he actually lives out here in austin um and then and again you look, and you're you, looking on your phone you're yeah he's doing phone. something shady something's going on in your phone in your head there bro yeah just and we, like oh no now what and we talked about this in the last episode where nothing nothing had been talked about with juice and roosevelt in that last sam taz episode and now here we are we're going to start right away opening it up where something's going wrong right something's happening um what a, what a beautiful scene for, with you too well here we go right um, i mean what a beautiful scene bro i gotta tell you the camera work the listening the simplicity I, you know, I, I actually don't even know if they cut out of that master take that you two did. I know you did it a few times. You were there in the morning, but they might have used one solid take because it was it was just so seamless. Right. Beautiful. Yeah, that was me and Rock. Uh, Rockman's he's something else. Um, we uh, we um, we knew we were going to go at it like all season. And yeah. I, I was hyped. You know, again, I was still in that position at that moment. I'll never forget that day. And this is why this show is so fucking funny. I'm off the bike. You notice when the camera comes in, me and You're Roosevelt, off. we're yeah. off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They kept shooting me riding in and getting off the bike. Oh, on the day? On the day. And I kept saying. Did you tell them we're not going to use this? I did. Yeah. And I was like, can I just focus on. <laughs> and they were so focused on me riding in. Like they were so focused oh, on me riding in, right? Like Roosevelt was there and me riding in. That we, you, and it's so funny that you just touched on this. We're running out of time because this was one of those, we got to get it before lunch. We got to yeah, get man. it before lunch. Big ass scene. Got to get it done before lunch. And, you, and what we mean by that, oh. what we mean by you got to get it done before lunch, the crew... Once you set up, remember, we're on location here. We're not on a stage. We're in, we're off some fucking highway in Los yep. Angeles. All the trucks are out there, all the semis, all the <clears throat> chairs, all the cameras, <clears throat> all the lights. They have an allotted time that they want to be there. If something goes wrong in that fucking highway, there's an accident, there's this, there's that. It's all cutting into your acting time, right? Yep. 
So we're sitting there off this highway and they want to get this before lunch, but they want to keep focusing on the ride up. And I'm thinking, man, we got a big scene. We got to record here. Like, why don't we just shoot the fucking scene? If it was me now, I would have been like, no, we're shooting the scene. Don't worry about the ride up. But he wanted to get the ride up, get off the bike. In 2011, get... you're going, okay. Whatever you need. Want... Okay, what do you need? What do you need? By the time we got this ride in scene down and me getting off, I think I had one or two takes at the scene. And that's why they did it in a two shot. While well, it looks guess, great, guess we couldn't get coverage. Guess fucking what, man. I, well, then that was just a happenstance lucky thing because I'm a movie guy. We've talked so much about movies at the beginning of this. Yeah. That's that's a fucking cinematic movie two shot between the two of you roving back and forth. I fucking loved it, man. And sometimes, and you know, and this is the funny thing about acting. Sometimes when you're frustrated and you're angry and it's working for the scene because yeah. Juice was frustrated and angry, yeah. you just use it, right? So yeah. I was so frustrated and angry at what was going on, but uh -huh. I was too young to export it. So I had to internalize it. So yeah. I think it helped in what I was doing. Did it. You did it again. Um, so we cut to Jackson and his family. This is a little bit of a weird scene for me. Um, you know, it's like, it's like this, bro. It's like daddy's coming home from a convention in Sacramento. Mm. And he, you know, he's, he's brought, you know, a, a little present from the Peanut Growers Association back to his wife. And hi, daddy, welcome home. And then... We cut to Jax opening up this whack of dough, like whack of dough. Yeah. And the boys are in the background, and the doctor, Artera, is looking at all this cash. And I just, what did I write down? I go, Tara really now is in with this soon to be retired uh, little devil, Jaxie boy. Like she's, mm -hmm. she's all in. Yeah. I right? don't know. I don't know what whack of dough is, but I do know that. Yeah. It, neither maybe, do I. Neither do you. I just said it. I don't yeah. care. I make up words all the time. You know that yeah. about me. No, no, no. Listen, I'm I'm all for wackado. I think that's a great, I think it's a great line. <laughs> so he pulls out this wackado, as you call it. And what I got here is that whack of dough, like whack of dough. And whack she of is dough. not yeah. stack of dough. No, whack, whack of, of it. Dough. Yeah. That she's conflicted because he's also sticking to his word of like, I told you I just got to put money away and then I'm out. Yeah. So she's got that he's getting out. Yeah. But at the same time, what is that going to take for him to get out? Like, could he, because he's coming with these two wackadoes, as you call it. So she's conflicted. She plays it incredible, as yeah. always. Um, so we're at the table. We're talking about the Luann situation. I'm going to need a lot of explanation here. Um, Can I just say this is the third scene Tig's been in, and I haven't opened my mouth yet. I, I think it's the first time in Tig Traeger's history that I've been in three scenes, big ones, nice little, not one word. I had exhausting. a real, I had a real easy shoot on this, on this yeah. show. Yeah, anyway. Those are exhausting sometimes. I got to tell you from a physical standpoint, they're exhausting. It's not that you want to speak all the time. It's that sometimes when they're, if you catch like a 6 a.m. scene or, or, a, or a late scene, and you're not saying anything, your yeah. eyes, your eyes start to get tired. You start yeah. to go like, uh, after, you know, after the person <laughs> does 14 takes, you're like, I'm starting to get tired. <laughs> um, and there is no line to wake me up where I got to think about what I'm saying. Um, Did you so, notice how the door is still busted and the windows are still all taped up, Theo? Yeah, I didn't know where we were at first. That I didn't know Roosevelt we were. axe job, it's still yep. all torched that fucking chapel. And yeah, we joked around about that. He he needed a good seven and a half hours to wreck the place. Like, <laughs> like a good he needed a seven and a half hour and a crew of 23 people to wreck yeah, it the way he to did. get the kind of damage that he got in about a minute and a half. It right. went from a double axe shot to completely eviscerating the yeah. clubhouse. Yeah, yeah. So we're at this table. Let me ask yeah. you this. We're talking about the Luann situation. Uh-huh. Okay. Clay and Jax know that Otto knows it's Bobby, but they're not telling the rest of the club? Correct. Okay. So both Clay and Jax But, but hang on, hang on. Because I assume, I mean, Gemma saw Otto first so Gemma then gives the info 
to Clay, right? So yeah. Clay's then now giving it to Jax, even though they've kind of probably known about it. Any, I remember back in the day when Luann was doing that stuff to Bobby and Bobby was accepting it. And oh my God, here we are. And, and, and don't tell anybody. And, you know, there's those rules between one percenters when, when the old man's in jail and stuff that Bobby went through with it, even though he probably didn't want to, but he did. Well, it's all coming out now, bro. You see the faces on Bobby's face? But they're lot- not going out of their way to say, like, no. there wasn't this talk at the table where it's like, no. hey, Bobby, we might no. have a problem. There's none of that. Okay. No. Okay. So Bobby looks like he's holding in a shit the whole time. Like, well, he looks he like... Said, those facial stuff. He's got facial shit going on all through this scene. <laughs> he was really good. He's holding in it. something. Yeah. It was like... Might have been banana bread. I don't know. A lot he's of work. up. He's plugged up. <laughs> so after he's plugged up and he's holding it in, Piney <laughs> wants to talk. Shut the door before you leave. Shut, Shut the door when you leave. I go, what oh, no. Scene. Wild, wild west. Here we go. I mean, come on, bro. He's my MVP of this season so far. Um, Piney, oh, for sure. He's the MVP right now. The old west. What history that first nine has. It's so palpable. You can just you can just feel it. And Piney swats that bag of money away. All that money on the table. He swats it. But we just feet. learned. Do you realize how important this scene is? Like, this might be one of the most important scenes ever in the show. We learned the entire history of John Teller. Yeah, pretty much. Like, we literally learned Clay killed him. We learned Gemma was involved. We learned that he wanted out of guns. We learned everything. We learned, I didn't know this. We learned, and we I, this comes later, but I'm going to say it now. We learned that sure. Piney is the fucking co-founder of the club. You bet he was. I didn't know this. I thought he was just like a friend. He's the fucking co-founder. No, him and JT and fucking Clay, man. They, 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 they fucking did it all. So he's as much Sons of Anarchy as anybody. As like anybody. If there, if there was ever it. a first nine, it's Piney and fucking JT. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. So he tells Clay, he accuses Clay of everything. I mean, Piney's through the fucking roof in that scene. I, that's some of the, again. He's got those, a contingency plan. If you're going to slip my throat, I got yeah. you. I see right through you. Clay's in a fucking pickle, man. I mean, some of my favorite shit after those two big boys were, you know, swatting home runs through that whole scene. Clay puts those two barrel of, of his arms, Ronnie, on that fucking door. Mm. And just from the on his back, he's going, I can hardly breathe right now. Like, this is this is not good. This is not good for him. So now we go to another great scene, double up two in a row, like the Uno cards, um, Jackson, Bobby scene. Uh, Clay's going to go handle his business. Um, that Jackson Bobby scene, he basically tells him like, bro, you got to get it together here. This is going to be trouble for you and this and that. And they're trying to figure it out. And again, it was nice to see Boone, Bobby, you know, getting, working through this all right. With them absolutely. Too. No, absolutely. He, he finally, you know, we all wanted arcs. We all wanted arcs and we, we got them. Eventually, some more, some less. But this was a, a true season four, like you. Yeah. An arc for Bobby. He had an arc to play. And it wasn't, and it wasn't all fun shit. This is emotional hiding shit for Bobby. And so you got to play that. And I, yeah, you did it well. So Clay's handling his business. He goes to see Gemma. He admits to killing JT in that moment. He basically says it. I said I wanted to say to you, um, is this actually? The first time Clay kind of admits that he killed JT. Thousand percent. Okay, there you go. I know that the audience isn't stupid that came along on this ride for us. And that this is one of the reasons why you and I are loving doing these so much is we get to revisit show a show that we were on that we hadn't really seen that much of. This shit blows my mind, man. I mean, this is great stuff. The audience must have just been like pounding the drum. I know. Oh like God. they knew, they knew, oh but my. now they've confirmed. Now they really know. It's like, I know that there's fucking other life forms out there. And it's like, when it comes on TV <laughs> that there's an alien at Chick-fil-A, I'm going to go, I knew that. I but knew now that. you told me. All along. Now yeah. you fucking confirmed it. I've always known it. So they always knew that Clay did JT. Right. They just weren't. Because right. there were so many things. Now that you and I are on this journey, there were so many things with um, 
uh, who is the son whose dad, Lowell, Lowell, Lowell. Jr., you know, yeah. all the shit. with all that shit out now. We knew. Now Now we know. The greatest, bike, the, the greatest bike builder in the world was always looking at JT's bike, and he just goes down all of a sudden in front of a truck. What? He's like our guy uh -uh. who just passed away recently. What? Bike builder. We stayed at his house. Uh, come on. Don't fuck me here. Uh, we stayed at his we, house. Yeah, remember we stayed at his house? He's one of the best bike builders in the world. He was building all those bikes. I, he went up and did an event at his dealership. Oh, God, yes. Did he, is he gone? He's gone. When did he pass? Recently. Oh, no. I need to call Diana's, Cindy's wife. Um, he had the bike. He had all that. No. Yeah. He's out of the Bay Area. I just forgot his name. We're fucking I terrible. can't remember anything on, these, on this. Bike. Yeah, we can't remember anything. But you know. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man. Yeah, beautiful. Arlen, Arlen. Arlen Ness. Ness. Arlen Ness. Yeah, Arlen stunning, Ness. Stunning human being. Stunning human being and one of the best bike builders on the planet. Thank you for coming up with that because I'm in the middle. Oh, of the I'm day. sorry to hear that. I, I must have been gone. Anyway, I'm going to call his wife. Okay, that's yeah. another conversation. That's another conversation. So, yeah. So there you go. So he passed away him. last year, by the way. Pardon um, me? He last passed year. away in 19. Yeah, two years yeah. ago. I don't even know what yeah. year No, I need. Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, that's what Lowell Sr. is like. So Gemma, this is what I'm a little confused about. Gemma's trying not to stir shit up. Why is she protecting? Why is she not guns blazing like clay to protect this secret? Did I miss something? No, you didn't miss anything. I think this is a, a pivotal family, family problem. Jack's... There's going to be a problem with him. Tara is now the mother of Jax. There's going to, there's going to be the, the letters she's hidden. Gemma wants to take a time out. She wants to take a big ass time out. She knows that Clay is volatile. She knows that Clay will fucking pull a gun if he has to. Now he's talking about Tara. Are we, are we there yet? Can we talk yeah. about that yet? Yeah. I mean, I, I think Gemma's just trying to go, honey, chill. Chill. Yeah, she seems like, because he's basically, what, what he feels like he's saying is, we're going to kill Tara, we're going to kill Piney. That's, that's basically what it feels like he's saying. Yeah, right there, go Tara and Piney are on the chopping block, literally. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. crazy talk. That's crazy that he's saying, and she's kind of like, hold up, hold like, on, walk it back, hold. Like they say, but, but the queen hold. of anarchy, the Gemma is, is also going, hold back and pull back like you just said but her brain she, she's got to get to answer she's got to that's get right to and now we go to answer dayton did not have to change out of his regular clothes he's wearing the no. exact clothes that dayton callie wears yep. as chief answer never been happy in his life those slide on shoes that have sauce stains on them yep. the pajama pants I saw him spill, spill ketchup on him myself. So did you on those shoes. I used to ask him when we were hanging out, I used to say, let me ask you a question. Do you pull on the neck of your shirt so it's this wide, like all the time? His neck. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like he was wearing, his neck was like here. He he could like Dayton he, ride? Could he ride? Yes, he can. He, he did, can. right? Yeah, he rode my bike a few times. I thought so. I thought yeah, he rides. He's sticking around in the back lot there. Yeah, yeah, we'd yeah. let him get on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like an 80s bodybuilder with those shirts on. And he and he literally rides and he does the whole thing. I mean, Dayton does it all. You know, he does it yeah. all. He writes, he fucking sings, he dances, he, he plays the he plays saxophone. Everything. Exactly. Everything. He does everything. Yeah. So Unser is we find out now in the show, not Dayton, Unser is a biker, right? He gets that beautiful red and you know, whatever yeah. Harley that he's got there. Um Unser knew about JT. Now, this is a little confusing, too, and I know the writing gets a little sticky here. Unser knew because Clay said something to him that's apparently a lie. We're going to come to find out later. But Unser wasn't involved in killing. No, Jason. not at all. Okay. But, but then what, what, was, what, what is his link to this? Well, his his link to this is isn't this where who got to him first? Did Clay get there first, and then Gemma Clay's there up? first? Gemma yeah. then rolls up on the two. Right. So so you know Clay Clay needs something from him. He needs something from him. He wants to find those fucking letters. He needs something from him. You know, get in the hospital. But he was involved in the past. 
He knows part of the past. Look, he, he just says, not in this scene, but coming up about the love of his life. That was Gemma. Of course. Fucking Wayne Unser has been in love with Gemma from afar since they were in high school together. He'll do anything and, for her. Anything. So Clay, Clay's been involved. He needed Unser from many, 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 many moons ago. And when JT died, that must have been a big thing. What a, what a shocker. But Unser's not stupid. He was working with Clay a bit back then, but no, he had nothing to do with JT's death. All right, then we cut to this Lila in the club scene. She's in the dressing room. Opie's looking like, you oh, know. Oh, yeah, in, that fucking scene. He is in full mode. He looks like a Marvel superhero. He looks like he's four times the size of everybody in the room. Um, she leaves. She's about, he says he doesn't want to see her shooting the scene. She mentions that there's a new producer, former porn star, Right. who can find Georgie Caruso because now the club is on the hunt for Georgie because right. everyone's under the assumption that Georgie killed Luann. Correct. So Opie stays and finds the birth control pills, which yeah. starts this kind of uh, slide for Opie here. Um, you know, what's really funny, by the way. Please. It's an acting Everything you thing. say to me is funny. So It is, uh, but this is an acting thing. I'm guilty of it. I did. I've done it a million times. You're tense in a scene. Something bad happens. The camera's on you. You're alone. That's why Robert De Niro's always had the best uh, acting advice. Do nothing. Right. Yeah. You know, beat, beat, just do nothing. And yeah. it'll be interesting. Sometimes when you're alone in a scene and the camera's yeah. on you, yeah. you, you think you got to do more. And what yeah. I mean by that, where I'm going with this is you got a table full of makeup yeah. and bottles and hairspray and you're angry and your thought is I'm going to clear this fucking table with my arm. Now I have to ask myself in real life, would I ever do that if I wasn't on a set? And probably not. Cause I have a touch of OCD and I like to clean shit up. So I'd probably be like, that was a fucking a touch of OCD. Yeah. I'm and I don't want the world with you. Yeah. I don't I have to knock on your door a certain way. So you don't get started. Yeah. No, I don't want to like, I mean, what if I break the glass? Now I can cut myself. And like, there's just a lot of things that go wrong with the swipe of everything off the desk. And also, I think that when I'm really mad, I tend to not punch things or like move stuff. But in movies and television, we do it all the time. I've done it a bunch. We get mad and we like, you know, we'll talk about that scene coming up in season seven where Jax breaks his foot, or breaks his toe, right? Where he Brother kicks man. the wall. Brother man on Patreon, when you get you and I get to talk about acting, yeah, playing opposites. Wait till the peeps hear that shit. It's yeah. gonna be all right. So I know so you he notice. clears it, he finds the birth control, he clears the whole shit. Um, he's angry. Now here we go. Hang this on, is hang on. I I I just have to point this out because you do this better than me. You you didn't see it, did you? In the OPC. You didn't see it, did you? Do you know what happened? Yeah. I want you to go back just because for shits and giggles. Sure. One of the cameramen, his feet are in the shot oh, no. in the mirror. Opie's doing the tough thing just before he went. And there's like a little, two little feet that go with like with a camera. Who's cam whose feet are in there? Couldn't because it's just feet. I don't remember the running shoes, but they're in the shot. <laughs> There's someone got busted holding a camera from the little tennis shoes, fucking scurrying away like a little squirrel at the back of the room. I went, oh, look at that. Who was our other guy on a camera? Dave, David, David. And, uh, and then who's our other guy? Oh, God. With they the mustache both, and the bald head. I love them. Come on, they were both of it. Steve. Can't remember. But Steve. he... Steve, 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 it might have been Steve. They're, they're amazing. Steve not been... as agile. He's not as <laughs> agile. He couldn't get out of there. Anyway, so, here we go. All right. Well, here we go. David Hassel, my fucking mom. fucking A. What Could a you, day. Can you please tell me oh my God. how does Baywatch get on this show? Like, how did that happen? Like, was he a So let me explain person? to you what was going on, Kim. Please. Because I'm a bit of a pop culture guy. Please. The Hoff was having a moment at this moment. Like in his real life or? In real life, huh. in the whatever year this was, whenever this 2011. was. 2011. Okay. So if you can rewind oh. time to 2011, yeah. David Hasselhoff had hit the scene hard again. 
uh, social media was just coming into play. Smartphones, yeah. smartphones were really starting to pick up. Things were going viral. And the Hoff, this was around the time of that whole Charlie Sheen fucking madness and all that, right? And this was where we were taking these like oh. older people, stars that were like part of the zeitgeist and they were coming back like one by one. Stunt like, casting, they call yeah, it. Yeah. Talking about like gremlins, like they were coming back. Wow. And the Hoff was having a moment. I think there was a video out of him like drunk eating like bologna sandwiches or something. And he would always <laughs> refer to himself in the third person, like the rock. And here he is. He's going to be on our show because we were known to do some stun casting. You know, we you did it. I mean, here we are. We got Tom Arnold coming on in a few, but Tom's like an actual actor. You, you know, Tom, True Lies is fucking great. In, and he's been great in a bunch of stuff um carpool with me oh yeah yeah and i'm not the half listen i'm not, yeah carpool i'm not knocking the half i mean he's fucking night rider he's baywatch i mean my kids still watch night rider it's but the, but there was more to it so he comes on he's a tall Donda. man he's a huh? tall man he's yeah, very tall, tall. Man. he's a tall man you know um, what they say about tall men yeah he's a tall <laughs> man he's playing a character um listen Here's the truth. And, you know, I don't give a fuck if the Hoff wants to fight me. Let's go. I mean, he was struggling with the lines. And I was, we were all there. And I've, listen, we've all been there. We have a struggle, whatever. But he was struggling. And it was strange for us because we were just like, okay, what's going on here? Like, we got this scene. We got to get it done. It's funny. We took pictures. Well that's right. Good for you. Thanks for reminding me, bro, because I kind of forgot it until just now. I still haven't talked as Tig, by the way, in this entire episode. It's coming up, yeah. my one line. Yeah. But you know what? I want you to think about this for one second. You're David Hasselmeyhoff. You're playing Dondo. You're in pink. Yeah. And you're a porn producer. And you've got yeah. eight Sons of Anarchy leads in and leather. We were, we were intimidating. When in, we were front of, in front of him. Yeah. And he's got dialogue upon dialogue yeah. and it's kind of information shit. You don't think you're going to stumble? Oh my God, did he stumble? Exposition. And he was Exposition stumbling. Exposition shit, here, hard. And here's the problem when the jackals are all together. <laughs> if one of us laughs. Done. We got to turn it's around. Over. You might as oh. well, you might as well just fucking end the scene. You might as well send us home, bring us back <laughs> another day because we can't get it together. So we started laughing. <laughs> Jackson and I were looking at each other, Charlie and I, and I'm, I'm fucking, I'm finished. I'm done. I'm, I'm once I go, I go, I'm biting the inside of my cheeks. I'm trying anything to let him get through his stuff. He's calling for lines left and right. He turns to me and he goes, you think this is funny? And I go, no. And he goes, he goes, you think you're laughing at the half? I said, no, I'm not. I said, I'm not, I'm surely not. Oh, I and, forgot that. And he, but he was, he was just frustrated, yeah. right? Yeah. And I told him, I said, bro, I'm one of the biggest fucking Knight Rider fans on the planet. Like Kit, I had all that shit. I said, whatever you need, I'm here for you. And we just wanted him to be great. And he was, I mean, at the end of the day, it fucking works, right? But sometimes, and this will go back to a lot of things with sons, when we're in a group, it's fucking overwhelming, man, for some people. So that's what was show. going on for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was our Hoff experience. And he wound up, again, now we're hanging the whole time after it. But that was his intro. That was like the first time we met him. We didn't meet him yeah. in makeup. No. We, we, we met him he on his own makeup in his own fucking van, Theo. Yeah. He came, he came <laughs> ready. <laughs> He has that costume on. He came right from his house in Baywatch. He came right onto our set. Boom. Chakalaka. I'm ready when to He go. confronted me. I was, I didn't know what was going on. So, <laughs> okay. So Unser is creeping around the office. Um, he only finds copies. Yeah, of the but original. I hated that. You know why? Because he goes like this. Shit. Copies. Like, it's like he had, he had to say it for the audience. Like, shit. Copies. Right. I, I challenge anyone to say, wait, you're going to talk to yourself? When you see copies there, you Never. just go, ah, shit, copies. 
We've no. talked about this. This is again, drives me nuts. we've talked about that. That drives me nuts. <laughs> that again, when you reach a certain point in your career, you look at that and you go, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying it. But in certain times you go, I'm just going to say this. I know you're so right. Um, okay. So Roosevelt Potter meeting, um, they're figuring out how to set up juice. There's something significant that happens in this scene here. Um, Potter's in full weird mode. You know, he's in that Jim Morrison doors mode. He, Theo, Theo, uh, was it just me? But him eating those French fries, my, my stomach was turning. I didn't it was know a was greasy, happening. greasy look, greasy thing. Yeah. I don't know, man. The whole thing with him is just, he's, he's just, I'm just getting a bad vibe from fucking. It's a bad life. vibe, but then he lies. And we right. find that he's a scoundrel. He lies to Rose. Scoundrel. Yeah, and Roosevelt's trying to do the right thing, and and it shows that it shows. Oh, I'm so glad you said that, bro. He's trying to be that, a good cop. He's trying to yeah, be a good cop. He's trying he to really be a good is. cop. Like Roosevelt's trying to be a fucking good cop, and this is why I respect the one thing that I loved about the Roosevelt character is he was who he was. He was trying to protect the town. He's not Too doing fucking anything Shay. Out of ego. You're so right, Rossi. So if there's like sometimes you know when you especially scoundrel. On that guy's a scoundrel. The and Roosevelt's a badass not. scoundrel, lying piece of shit. No one can ever say Roosevelt is a fucking enemy on this show nope. because he's not. No. Nope. He's actually a good guy. Yep. I would say the same thing about Hale Jr. when he was on the show. Yep. Hale Jr. was a good guy. And they replaced him with another good guy who was yep. like, I'm just trying to protect my family and the town. Correct. So you got this guy who we come to find out is a scoundrel, Potter. He lies, right? And Roosevelt leaves and he does all his weird stuff. Don't talk to me when I'm eating. And we come to find out that everyone has an agenda, right? Yeah. Um, we go from there. Uh, Unser is reading the letters. Yeah, it's bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. You can't fucking convince me, even though it was a great scene, that Clay's just going to pull up at the exact time that our boy's going to burn the fucking letters. <laughs> oh, wait, stop. And Clay comes bouncing off his fucking bike to pull yeah. him out just at the right time. Go fuck off with that. He right? almost pulled his hamstring and he tightened. He stomped on those letters. Um, he and Clay are going at it here. They're, they're, then, they're, there's they an are. argument. There's an argument. And then he said this, right, Theo? He goes, um, he just told, he told Anser that Gemma was the love of his life. Like, mm. don't, he says that right in that scene. Yeah. I, I, I think again, that these twosomes, you had a couple with fucking Roosevelt mm -hmm. and these guys and, and Gemma and Otto at the beginning, there's a lot of twosomes in this fucking show. And this one here is again, information 101 about Wayne, the love of his life. Don't, don't, don't try and put anything over on me, Anser. She's the love of your life. It's okay. He's and he's got, and that's the right. brilliance of Clay. He's got shit on everyone. Yeah, everybody. He does it to Tig. Yeah. He does it to Unser. Yeah. He does it to Gemma a little. Gemma's kind of got shit on him. Um, he, you know, he does it to Jax where he'll kill it, he'll kill him. Yeah. His the weight that Clay throws around is ultimately like intimidation on everyone. No fucking kidding, man. Absolutely right. So the Georgie gun scene. I got to I got to just give a shout Tommy. Out. Yeah, let me give Tommy a shout Arnold. Out to Tommy Arnold. I got to tell you the one thing about Tom that I love. I fucking love that guy. You know him way better than I do. But yeah. I'm going to tell you in the few times Tom and I have worked together, he was fucking down for whatever. Like you'd be like, "Hey, 10 guys are going to beat the shit out of you. You're going to go run." And he'd be like, "Okay." Like Do I need just, knee pads? Do I need yeah. a back support? But I'm in. I'm doing he's my own just stunt. In. I'm He's in. So I got it. I give so much credit to Tom in that fact because Tom has had such an interesting career and he played Correct. the shit out of this role. He and did. everybody knows who he is. He's <clears throat> fucking great. He goes running with that gun. He pulls the gun where uh, Renton's character, what's Chris Renton's character's name again? Uh, Ima. Ima. Ima pulls her gun. You know, whatever. every time I see Chris on this show, it just makes my day. So yeah, much. I, I, I love her, her love for animals. I mean, she and such a great actor, man. I love her. Yeah, we got to get her on the show. She's fantastic. She had, oh, we're gonna. She, 
you, we got to get her on. She had some journey with this show. And, uh, and I think that, yeah, you know, again, her role wasn't even supposed to be as long as it did. She was with us for so long. Right. But, and she did all the appearances with us. Like she's yeah. been with us, with us. So Georgie goes running. Um, and, and again, I just love, I just love Tom Arnold because he's been beat down by the Suns multiple times, <laughs> multiple times. So we're back to Clay and Unser. Clay is saying he's going to protect everyone. Yeah. Like he, in his mind, and this is what's funny about delusional behavior. If I do this, I'm going to protect everyone by, by basically getting rid of the evidence and getting rid of people and whatever he has to do, kill somebody, whatever he's got to do, it's for the good of everyone else. It's not his own narcissistic behavior. Well, and sure. And can I also say another weird thing popped up to me? Clay goes, some of those letters were too burnt to read. Well, then just ask Gunther. Just ask Dayton. He's right there. He read the whole thing. Just ask him. Like, if they're too burnt to read, what were you missing? What was, in, what, him? What was in him? Exactly, Dayton. And like, Dayton literally well. take the letter and go, hey, this yeah, part's where, burnt off. Part? This part's burnt off. What was it? What did, what did it say? Just yeah. do that. Did, no, I, we don't I see do an that. I see an Ian and I. I see an Ian and I. What was it? <laughs> I found that strange. All right. So uh, Chibs, Chibs knows something is going on with Juice. Nice got- moment. You yeah. know, bro, like, we're, this is why, and, uh, you know, our Sam Fam and Theory Pod, we need, we need to tell everybody right now that you and I don't do, we think about everything. We think about everything we're doing for this incredible show that we're so lucky to be doing. Yeah. We're not going to have a guest for a couple of shows because we've realized this arc that Juicy Pants that you are on, mm-hmm. we don't want to break up the flow. There's no. too much going on. We would have missed stuff like this because we get a guest on. We talk about other things, which we love to do, but not in this one or the next show. No, no, no. but we're going to bring someone on who's pertinent to the situation. We will. Yeah. In a perfect world. Yes, we will. In a perfect world. But this right here, I'm glad you brought it up between Chibs and Juice, is what a fucking nice, simple moment that Chibs notices something's going on and he goes yeah. right away. Is it clip passages? What? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, it is. How many Smokers are the shitters, he says. Yeah, yeah. Smokers. I are love the that shit, man. I, I no pun intended. No pun intended. I, I love those little scenes that you and Chibs are starting to build up right now. Can we just talk about how brilliant a weed colonic shop is? Yeah. You buy weed and you can get a colonic? How about that? How about that? Clear passages. No, I mean, that would on. be a cool. That would be a cool T-shirt. Sutter was so good at coming up with fucking names for that stuff, man. That would oh. be a cool T-shirt, like a Clear Passage T-shirt. Yeah, I would. Clear yeah, Passage. I would. Yeah, that's a good T-shirt. I would like to wear one of those. People like that would be like that's one of those ones. Like I always say, if you know, you know. Like if you saw me wearing a Clear Passages T-shirt and you knew the show, you'd be like, Holy "Hey, shit. man, that's cool." We gotta, we gotta maybe come on Patreon. We gotta. Caesar, what? That's yeah, what a great idea. Yeah, we gotta talk to you know Come because on. It, I remember that. I remember when it would be like when the show first started and we'd be doing these events and I'd see somebody with a Telemaro t-shirt and I was like, that's fucking cool, right? You yeah. got a Telemaro. And you don't even have a Sons of Anarchy t-shirt. You oh. have a Telemaro t-shirt. Oh, like that's cool, right? Because yeah. you're like, that's that's when you're really like a super fan. Yeah. And I love that. So we go to um back with Unser and Gemma. And this is a big Unser episode. I mean, he's really rocking out, but here's what's funny about this. This is a big Unser episode. No, but I wrote right. And of course, Gemma now shows up. Perfect time. Listen to how great this is. If you know the way uh, television shows and movies are filmed. Unser probably filmed that all in one day. He did. Yeah. He did all the scenes from this episode in one day. He did. Thanks. Thanks for the paycheck. Love you all. One location. One yep. location. Yeah. Scene after scene after scene after scene. Even they though they it all, then they lit it all. Uh, we're outside for all of it. Let's get it before the sun goes down and action. Ronnie, pull up. Katie, pull up. Answer, stay seated in your pajamas. It's amazing. So what, what an amazing way to work. And he always did that. If you remember it for years, I bet you you can count. Uh, I bet you Answer was averaging two days an episode for every episode he was in. 
Yeah, very rarely was he not either in his office with Hale back in the day, or he'd be at the clubhouse once in a while with us boys. But rarely, he, was, he wasn't part of the traveling circus that we all were. So Dayton would really get to have a location, and they would shoot, shoot it in a day. What a, it's who's, a who's better than him? Who had a better job than him? I mean, you Nobody. think about it. Nobody. Fucking hey, so we go to Juice and Roosevelt in the cell talking. Um, I hate that I was always flexing my jaw when I was I acting. I can't believe you just said that, bro. Are we the same person again? <laughs> I just wrote down. You do something with your fucking jaw when you're tense. Uh-huh. Just when you're tense. Yeah. It was a character thing that you, and, and you. No, it was, I got to tell you, it was me learning how to act. Oh, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. isn't that amazing, bro? It was me learning how to act. Good for fucking you. Yeah. I didn't, I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. I remember. Good for fucking you, Rossi. Do you ever remember, you probably don't remember this because it was back in 1923 for you. But yeah. do you remember when you used to take headshots in the beginning of your career and they'd say, yeah. they'd say, hey, look away and look back or do something else because, you, you know, you can wear tension. You can sure. tense up your yeah. eyes. And yeah, a lot of people who aren't used to being on camera tense when they're going to take a picture, which is why uh-huh. I don't like telling people when I take pictures of them. I like to just say, just do you do what you do. Don't even look at the camera and I'll get pictures because when people pose, they get their, their face looks different. Um, I was learning how to act because amazing. If I was angry or I was tense, it was showing in my face. Like, yeah. yeah. Right. And now I'm so relaxed, right? I'm so relaxed that I don't worry about stuff like that. So other people, the way, the way your anger, the way your frustration manifests, mine manifests in my jaw, which is Man. why I have this fucking jaw. So glad we pointed that up. Good. Yeah. Good. So I was watching that scene and I'm like, the wow. fuck am I doing with my jaw? And I realized I don't do that anymore, but I was doing it then Amazing. because I was fucking nervous. So Amazing. Um, yeah. we go to clay rolls in, which here's okay. Again, I'm not knocking. I have a question here. Clay is having a very fucking tense episode. Uh-huh. He, we're finding out all this deep shit. His basement's getting more filled with shit. Yeah. He's coming into this Georgie scene. Why does he come in all happy? It must have been a directorial choice. It, he must have talked about it with Paris. He must have actually truly talked about it. He's so angry. He's so tense. Let's go opposite. Let's be super happy. Hey, Georgie Porgy, I'm it's gonna weird. put a bullet in your head. But hey, Georgie Porgy, it was a, it was a choice, bro. And they must have talked about it. That's the only thing I can come up with. It was it was just a weird choice for me because he came in so like like nothing had happened. Like yep. he didn't like he didn't have the weight of the world on his shoulders, which is fine. You can Fair do enough. that if you're a sociopath or whatever. But you know, I just I don't know. It's weird. So Georgie's tied up. Yeah. Ball to in his me, mouth. Okay. I left this scene early. No, I don't even know. Am I in this scene? No, I'm not even, I'm not even in the scene. I'm gone. You're out. I'm you're not, out. You're not, I'm there. not there. You're, you're not there. So you're you guys got, Coke. you guys got Tom Arnold and Hasselhoff on the same scene on yeah. the same day. Yeah. How was that? Well, I, I, have I said my one line yet? I think so. Should I? About the dolls? I mean, is this- Yeah, you I said it. Know? You said it in the early Hasselhoff scene. Oh, the earlier one about dolls? <clears throat> okay, so I'm finally talking. Look, h- how was it? I don't fucking remember how it was. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm with all the jackals and Tommy's got a fucking ball in his mouth. And we talked all the time, him and, my, him and me on set about, you know, the movie, movies that we've done together and shit. So I don't, I don't remember at, at all, but I know that Hassel and my Hoff was in a much better mood. It wasn't yeah. all about him all of a sudden. It was about, yeah. you know, really Tom Arnold. And what do you mean you're not going to kill that fucking guy? He's a douchebag. Come on, man. Um, a weird scene, though, eh? With the writing, with the now the Chinese are going to get involved and now we're not going to kill him right away. And Yeah, it's, uh, the, it, again, it's... A prolonged thing. thing. I, it didn't work. Oh. And Bobby was angry. Angry? Is this where he tackles the guy? or, or was it, No, no. He's already he's, done that? He's already done that. Okay. Yeah, that, we, we never really talked about. No, this. we breezed right over that. Trust me, you do not want to get tackled 
by Bobby Elvis. He no, was fucking. Boone used to. No, he's fucking strong as an. He's strong. Ox, he used to be a soccer fucker. player. That guy and yeah. he's packing a few pounds and yeah. he's strong as a bull. He used to win those sumo wrestling things every night he after sure work. Did. Yeah, he he's, sure he's got a low center of gravity. He, he just he's going. Um, okay, so th- things get sticky here. Juice is rolling up to the warehouse. Filthy I'm getting filthy. so tense now. Yeah, things are getting weird now. It's Rossi, tell us about that. Come on, man. And Big Chris is so funny with you. Friday night. It was a Friday. Oh, Friday. No. Yep. Crew just wants to go home for the weekend. Here comes this dumbass kid who's got to ride up on his bike in the dark on that dirt. Try not to go down. That was hard. Always good riding. Hard. Good riding for you. Yeah, because you know, you know, when you're riding slower, it sucks, right? So you're riding like ten to f- yeah. to go with the camera. At any moment, this six hundred pound bike's going to go down because you're on gravel, and you know, filthy Phil Chris is just enormous. We're getting. He's really, you know, that was his first kind of like scene. I think you're right. Yeah. He has a good, great moment later where he's like, you know, he was getting bored and wanted to talk to me. Talk to somebody. Yeah. Um, You know, listen, that was kind of one of those scenes that you want to make it work so bad. Right. So I get, you know, filthy Phil comes knocking. He sticks the brick down his pants. And now you're on this little journey. And this is where I think the audience kind of started to get that nervous feeling about juice all the time. I did. Yeah. You're like, what are you doing? I did. Just put it back. Just tell him to wait. Just fucking pretend you fell. Just fucking do something. And and that's why he didn't, because that's what makes great television. I know. Oh my God. It rips your heart out. Especially now that we're re re looking at this and revisiting it. Can you imagine on that Tuesday night back in 2011, the fucking world is going, no, no, juice, don't no. just put it back. All signs are pointing to him dying. They All sure signs were. are pointing to juice dying at one they point. Sure, they sure were. Yeah. yeah. So the Mayan kid, uh, uh, Jesse, or whatever his name is, I'm just saying his real name. He, he, he knows something's going on. Um, juice goes to bury the brick, but instead he sits down and falls asleep. The dumbass. Wakes up so tired. You were so tired. So fucking tired because he's exhausted. <laughs> You're exhausted from stress. You haven't slept since Roosevelt brought you into the cop shop a week ago. You haven't had yeah. fucking one minute's rest. You almost saw kid kill, kill a bunny in front of you. You just yeah. can't. You can't cope. Can't do shit. it. Anymore. Can't cope. Can't cope. Should have been working at Blockbuster. <laughs> so as and here's what, here's what's funny. I miss Blockbusters. I'm Me curious. too. Me too. I was just saying kids today will never know the struggle of you'd see all these movies on the wall and then you had to look behind them if the tape was there. And if the tape wasn't there, you couldn't rent it. And it yeah, out. yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you'd run to the front and be like, Hey, do you have any more of a face off anymore? Any more? <laughs> The woman Nick Cage, John Travolta. You if, if you're trying to tell me that you didn't have to go to the bathroom before you went to Blockbuster because you um, knew you'd be there for an hour, hour. walking up and down those hall, those those aisles, and oh, I'd go God. to the guy and I'd be like, "You have it this, and oh, somebody just returned. Somebody just returned it. I'll take it. I'll take it." And then I, <laughs> I get my microwave popcorn. I get, and now your night is made. You're gonna, you just got fucking face off for two days, three days. Uh, what a, an amazing God. thing. Okay, so that's where juice should have worked. Um, here's what's funny about me. Whenever I have to sleep in scenes, I fall you asleep. Sleep. So you really fall asleep. I do every time. Yeah. Every time I fall asleep. So yeah. uh, we cut to, uh, you know, juices running in there. Clay and Gemma having a morning coffee. Yeah. So much tension between them, right? Yeah. Uh, she hands Clay the letters. This yeah. is a trick, right? Those aren't the real letters, right? Uh Claim Gemma answer didn't give it. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, they're they're not the real letters. No, they haven't. They, they she haven't goes, oh, them. I burnt them. Yeah, but but here's interesting. I want I want to bring something up to you. Like, answer didn't give up Clay to Gemma. Mm. Answer kept the pact with Clay by not telling Gemma he knows anything about, you know. Uh, ta- tasking him to go get the letters for Clay. Yeah. He didn't tell Gemma that. No. Here's Gemma going, oh, here they were. 
they're they're just they're they're yeah you and know. she gave him like some ashes from like yeah there's the nothing garbage. Was, she's like oh look there. at this i got these, got these. There, there's nothing in them honey oh it's all done it's just bad stuff that, that yeah. you know we, we don't it's all done no that's it's all, all done no need to talk about it no and clay's looking at her like mm, i don't think so yeah but clay's going but you know she didn't say hey motherfucker you 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 got to these before me like what are you talking aren't we together on this no no she didn't give up so Auntie now we got now we got this tension between them two palpable like you know between them real palpable yeah yeah for sure okay so um juice we seize the mines he buries the brick uh um jacks at the clubhouse runs into opie with ima yeah what a fucking scene that is um Jax confronts him and Obi basically plays the like pot call in the kettle. You know, yeah. who are you to say anything? Yeah. I got to tell you something that happened to me when I was watching the scene mm. and it has nothing to do with the scene, but I want to tell you what it made me think of when they went outside and they sat on those park benches, smoking, 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 smoking and they had their moment. I had a moment like literally like an existential outside my body moment where I went, Every one of our characters is so different. And that's why this show works. Like watching them two and their relationship and how different they are, like physically, Touché. emotionally, like just the characters. Here's Obi looking amazing, right? And then when you look at all the guys who are in the cuts, to you look at Touché. some, we're all so different, like not just physically, but yep. like who we are as characters, the way Tig is wild and unpredictable and will do anything, yep. but yet has a heart. And DL is this psychopathic, you know, blah, blah, blah. And Clay is this bad history. We have, it was so well done. And we all became these guys. I think that's why the show works. I had one of those moments that that's why I think it works. It was an easy watch. Meaning 10 leads on this incredible character driven show, even our guest stars, it was an easy watch. Meaning, we know people knew who you were, they knew your names, they knew you had little idiosyncrasies that made your character pop every time you talked or were in a scene. It was an easy watch. And mm -hmm. then Sutter piles on brilliant Hamlet esque Shakespearean drama with comedy for 92 shows. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Oh, it's if you got- It's fucking brilliant. And that scene made me realize that watching those two and the way they interacted, I was like, oh my God, man. I went, I was thinking about them when and they were moving that kids furniture in the early episodes. Yeah, Theo, good, good, good pop right now because we were all season four. We're getting to know each other so fucking well. Yeah, so well. That Jack's Opie familiarity, even when they were fighting and clawing and going, you're a fucking idiot or you're one to talk. It was easy, easy to do because we were as tight as tight could be. I know friends. on and off set and it really shows. And I had one of those moments where I was watching. I was like, fuck, you know why this show works? And a lot of these fucking other shows don't. Nobody talks. Nobody knows each other. We knew each other so well that they're just saying sure action did. and we're just fucking being in we those sure moments. Did. And, um, sure you know, real acting is being. And, uh, and when you have great story and great characters and uh, uh, man, it really is once in a lifetime shit. So after that, Unser's following Tara. Why? I, know. <laughs> I, know. I got to bring up one little small thing when Opie goes, I miss Donna. Mm, Opie said, I missed Donna. It was kind of heartbreaking. heartbreaking for heartbreaking. me, right? And Should for all for of you. us. For you um, too. For and Tig. For, for Tig. Uh, anyway, I just popped that. Okay. So I go, ha, 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 ha. There's like five ha, ha's. Right. Unser hiding out with the ball cap. And he's in a Unser truck that says Unser, Unser truck, truck on the yeah. fucking thing. Yeah. And he's got the ball cap pulled down like. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think he gave it away with the door panel. <laughs> <laughs> I think the door panel yeah. gave it away. Um, yeah. But it says your no, fucking name he's, on the door. He's following her because he didn't get the real letters. Oh, he's not so, protecting her? No. He's oh. watching to see where she might go to get the letters. Got it. That, that's what I think. 
You're I could probably be completely right. fucking wrong, Sam Fan. Right. Let right. me know. Um, and then we go to this auto meeting with Bobby. Beautiful. He's playing it deep. It's beautiful though. I, Bobby's I, going deep in that episode. I I and he I mean, lied, in that scene. And he lied his face off at the end. He completely lied. Fuck. Georgie's dead. We fucking blew his brains out. Yeah. I I like the simplicity of the scene where Bobby didn't get into the rules and regulations of what it means when the old man's in prison or she came on to him. It wasn't him coming on to her. He didn't get in or she was uh, running out of money and that was her way. All he said was she, I never loved her and she only talked about you. That's right. That's it. And, and again, you're right. The writing is so tight in the scene and, and, uh, and, you know, Bobby just straight up lies to him. And I'm thinking the first oh. thing that came into my mind as a fan, as I went, will he find out that he lied? Like, will somebody tell him? I know. Yeah. I thought that too. Does anybody like have connections or does he just have to believe the word he gets from the sons? Because it's not like somebody's going to be like, like there's no, he can't get on like the web. Well, <laughs> like how Otto, can he, can, Otto can barely see. Right. Can't really, his visitation rights are apparently coming to an end soon. So he's going to rot in prison. Uh, I don't know. Bobby just thinks, and I think Bobby must think that we're going to. Does that come back him. and bite him in the ass later? You're asking me. Yeah, what the fuck? I don't do know that? anything. Who cares? Who cares? Jesus Christ. Okay, so here we go. The bricks are being passed out. Oh, Let's God, that was there's one, CEO, CEO. one brick I light. Shit right now, I can't. I can't. I can't go through it again. I can't. Right. And we ended on your face. We ended right on Juicy Pants' face, as we should. We start right there, too, in the next episode. Do we? Yeah, I remember that. Oh, my God. I might be wrong. No, no. And Tommy goes... There should be thirty in that beautiful accent. It should be thirty keys of coke. There's only twenty nine. The the tension in that fucking room. And that's man. the way you end an episode too, because you go man. fuck. And again, this is we, that moment where you go, he's dead. We should just review six right now. Let's. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to wait a week. Like, let's just do it. Yeah. Now. And, and I'm, and again, that's why I asked the things about Bobby lying and like, and what was Unser telling her for? I, you know, I'm at this point now where I'm like a super fan, where I'm like, what the fuck is going super on? Super fan. Yeah. Like, why are they doing this? Why'd this happen? And, and I don't know if it's just me or maybe just because we're in the groove here on Reaper Reviews, but these episodes are just like flowing now. Like, you know, we got, there was definitely times season three where I was like, what the fuck are they talking about? And now they're just like, I'm not saying they're all great. I'm saying that they're flowing now. Like we're in it. We're just moving. It's, it's kind of like being on the wave here. Um, no, it and is. And we got a, we got a lot coming up. So it's great shit, man. So you and I are going to be on the move soon, both of us for work. Um, yeah. I'm not going to be looking like this for much longer. Um, I'm going to look drastically different, apparently. Wait till you see uh, what this guy's going to look like. <laughs> That's great. I can't wait. I'm keeping yeah. the burns. That all, that all came out White House lawyers or White House yeah. plumbers, I mean. It came White out. White House plumbers. Yeah, HBO. That's going to be a, a pretty cool gig with some really incredible Why don't you tell everybody what it's about? Watergate. It's about yeah. 1972 Watergate. I'm playing a real guy. He's gone now. Died in 1994. Frank Sturgis. Uh, look him up. Pretty yeah. amazing. And it's HBO. So they're going to spend time and money on it. And it's going to look amazing. And it's 1972. And uh, yeah, here we go. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And But yes, new location. I'm going to be on my laptop. And I got to get a better background. This uh, spare room of mine is going to put it to bed soon. Put it to bed. Those pillows. People have so much fucking. Yeah, I might take them with me. They either love them or they hate them. I might take them with me just to take them with piss you. people just off. You know what I mean? Put yeah, put them in the background. Put or, one behind each ear. Yeah, yeah, or wherever you are in the, hotel, <laughs> in the hotel you're in, just take your hotel pillows and put them behind oh, you. Just so be careful what you wish for, peeps. I'm yeah. bringing them with me. Can't, you will not see coats without pillows behind them from here on out. <laughs> There's a fucking pillow on both sides of you right now. <laughs> um, yeah and then i'll be in a new location for a little while too i'll be gone soon uh till well let me let me get it no no let, yeah give, give him a little let bit me get it let me wrap it all up first and um 
And then, uh, and that's it. And we're rocking and rolling Reaper views where, you know, everybody knows the deal now on Patreon. That's our, that's our baby. We're, um, we're doing oh, boy, discords. I, I got to get on that today. I got to say hi to the peeps. Because I did. I said I, good morning to everybody. This did morning. you? Yeah, oh, yeah. good for you. I've been and so you, fucking swamped. I got going to release that behind the scenes thing you did on Patreon. Oh, yeah. too. Justin's yeah. going to release, release that. Nice. And then, then we did our day. first live Q and a. Oh, hour and 45 minutes. That was fucking amazing. We didn't way. stop. Some of the greatest questions. Questions, questions were amazing. Asked. Yeah. And then also a oh. uh, big shout out to us, which we, we've never done one single ounce of publicity for this show. And somehow we were uh, ranked the number one after show podcast on Screen Rant. So uh, thanks, Screen Rant. Out of all the after Number shows, freaking one. I know. That's pretty How cool. How sweet is that? That's Come really on. cool. Out of all the we're talking uh, West Wing, Sopranos, yeah. Office, all kinds of stuff. And we were number one. Come on. Yeah. And Our we don't really care amazing. about stuff like that because they're all amazing. Anybody who's doing anything is Correct. amazing, but pretty cool. Like we don't, you know, we're, you know, we've always done this for me and you and anybody else yeah. who's coming along for the ride. Um, we're just enjoying watching this and connecting every week. But um, pretty cool that they wrote that and they wrote some really kind words in that. So shout out to Screen Rant. Um, yeah, you know the deal. Um, if you're watching this, like, subscribe to the channel, write some kind words about Kim's pillows. And then, um, you know, if you're interested in more wackado, go to pa Patreon. Yeah. And uh, look dough. up Theory Pod. <laughs> and um, it's pretty and wacky we'll, over there. We're going to whack it. Over it's wackado over there. <laughs> it's fucking wackado over there, is right. <laughs> and we got a bunch of our show uh, airs over there all the time, and we love it, and we're having so much fun. So, um, you know the deal. Thank you. We appreciate you. Uh, I love much you, love, peepers. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Theo. Love you, buddy. Bye, buddy. Love you. Take bye -bye. it easy.